Well, welcome back everybody to another amazing show of Hoot Loot. You, I have so much to talk about today. But um, anyway, what I want to talk to you first about is kind of the theme of the show and why I'm here uh, in front of the Capitol <laughs> where nothing gets done except money gets spent and wasted and a whole bunch of incumbents that love to see themselves get reelected love to waste our money. I'm going to show you a little bit of proof of that in a second. And um, I also want to make an announcement that the um, that we will be having a special guest in a week or two. I'm not sure if it's next Saturday or the Saturday after. We're going to have a guy named um, John Williams. Now, John publishes something called shadowstats.com. If you go to that site, what uh, John does is he adjusts the things like the CPI, GDP, and everything else for changes in the formula that have occurred over the last 40 years. Yeah, believe it or not, our government changes formulas so they look better and get reelected. Anyway, uh, today's show is called uh, No One Rings a Bell at the Top, but ding, ding! And please like and subscribe, and we will see you in just a minute. All right, I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, evidence of uh, fiscal, federal mismanagement. And I'll show, show it to you in just a second, but I want, I want to ask you what job it is where you need no education, no work experience, you don't have to show up, and you get paid almost $200,000 a year. I'm sure you guessed it by now. It is a politician in the federal government. Yeah, they get all the perks too, they get the insider trade, and they've done such a good job that they get reelected all the time. That's going to stop. Vote out all the incumbents. The evidence of it is right here. I'm going to keep showing it to you and showing it to you and showing it to you because that is the only way to shove term limits down their throats. We cannot replace them with Republicans because they'll do the same damn thing. This is not a partisan movement. This is a um, pr preservation of freedom movement that we're starting right here. And this is why on this chart, I'm going to show you this right now, incumbents decade of uh, financial mismanagement. The source is usdebtclock.org. And what you're going to see here, this is the GDP for um, you know several different snapshots in time. The national debt, now quickly, that's grown. That grows about, that doubles like every five years pretty much. And the um, interest expense on the debt, well, isn't this interesting? The, if you look at the interest expense divided by debt, just below that, um, the, the rate goes down. It was 5.3%, went up to 5.9%. And now, usdebtclock.org has uh, done a projection or has received one. And uh, they're going to pay an average of 1.1% with 52 with the... I don't even know how much debt there is in, uh, in 2026. 52 trillion, they project, and almost no growth in GDP. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, really, really, is it so hard to understand why that would be? Why would be when you crowd out private capital that you're going to get slow growth forever? And you're going to have your living standards go down. And uh, it's, just, it's just unbelievable. As a, but as a... Um, as a proportion of federal spending, on the other hand, which you'll see at the bottom, and GDP, um, what you see is a fairly stable uh, type of curve over, well, I shouldn't say curve, but a fairly stable, uh, stable relationship oh, um, between them and the last uh, 42 years. So if you look at federal spending, that actually has, you know, it's actually lower. It's actually lower because interest rates are lower. Now, I'm not sure which is the egg and which is the chicken here, but what I can tell you is this. It doesn't make sense for a country that has that much in debt to become more in debt unless the rates go down, okay? Um, I'm not sure that the rates went down intentionally. Um, I have a feeling they were just crowded out. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see, but all I know is this. The more the government spends, the more they mismanage your funds, and the more and the more miserable we all are. If they just declare it, instead of declaring like uh, the war on poverty, which we lost, the war on drugs, which we lost, the war on terror, which we lost, why don't we declare a war on prosperity and all go home wealthy? Okay, that's my solution to the problem. 
in addition to voting out all the incumbents, shove term limits down their throats. Fire them. Oops, I'm sorry. Here we go. Hold on. All right. So now we're going to go to um, the canaries in the coal mine and what's been going on in the market. And I know you all want to hear about Grant I had an interesting conversation with somebody who, of course, wanted to oh, sell me sell me mining 2%, 2% a day in mining is what she claims to have made. Okay, so you're a billionaire now like Warren Buffett and even Nancy Pelosi doesn't make that much money. From Bitcoin mining? Come on. Give me a break. Especially with Bitcoin going down. Uh, you know, scamming has turned into so pervasive. It, 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 not one week goes by, I don't hear about another scam. It's incredible. People do not, at this point, there's lawlessness. There is um, a poor judicial system. Things have got to change. And we've got to get the same people out who have led to the problems coming in because they all want to be reelected. Who wouldn't want a job? That's, well, I, I, I can barely call it a job, but who wouldn't want to call an occupation where you don't have to show up and you get reelected because you've stacked, you've stacked everything in your, in your favor, okay? I mean, simple as that. Would AOC have been reelected after costing Amazon 25,000 six-figure jobs? If anybody cared, well, I hope you do. And I hope you know where to go if you do, because I won't lie to you here. I have no incentive to lie to you here. The only incentive I have is to tell you the truth. And I want to tell you the truth. And please keep an open mind because things are coming down the pike this year that are not going to be pleasant. I've been around long and well, I've been around a long time. Kind of like petrified wood. <laughs> I've been around that long. But I'm telling you, you know, just because I've been around a long time, I don't necessarily embrace everything that's new okay not all new technology succeeds it just seems like it's the technology of the future but not not always is it okay so with that little rant i'm gonna go into bitcoin anyway this woman uh tried to get me mining uh, or tried to tried to ask me about it and i said uh yeah i'd love to buy some can you tell me what you think of the president and corporate headquarters and and the profitability of the company and of course, she tries to she tries to fake that. Of course, she doesn't know squat about it because she she couldn't care less. You know, she's out to scam. That's it. Period. End of story. You know, who cares? You know. All right. So anyway, Bitcoin has um, basically started started in a downtrend. It is in a bear market, I do believe, because of a series of tops below tops, bottoms below bottoms, which is what defines a bear market. The reason Bitcoin is here as a canary in the coal mine is because this is probably a magnet for all the speculative money in hip stocks that people just can't get enough of. They're so obvious. You know, I would I was gonna put Peloton in here, but Peloton's down like 80 bucks now. And all of a sudden everybody, oh yeah, I get to cycle it home. Oh, sorry, you didn't make money on your investment. You know, you have to cycle the stress off, I guess. All right. Um, Tesla, the other canary in the coal mine by my, my good friend, Elon Musk. You know, Elon, oh God, what do I say about him? I, I'm not going to say much about him today, except for the fact that uh, I'd like to go to Mars with you, buddy. Um, Tesla hasn't yet broken a, um, you know, a sideways flag. I think it will. Okay, and the reason I think it will, we actually went into on last show called, if you think 2021 20, uh, was uh, a rough year, 2020, you ain't seen nothing yet. We talked about on that show, I won't talk about it at too much length, but the fact of the matter is with all these uh, all these companies coming out and doing wanting to do electric cars, now Amazon, no, I'm sorry, now Domino's wants to have an electric robot delivery vehicle. Oh my, hello, is there going to be a glut of these things or what? All right, there's going to be a glut of these things. That's all there is to it. So, um, and of course, Elon Musk was Johnny on the spot sold a big chunk of his shares. And why does a man reportedly worth $300 billion need to enter into a fire sale of shares? Well, I guess it was going to trigger capital gains. That's fine. Okay. But, um, you know, still, this guy is the cash poorest guy I'm aware of. He probably doesn't even pick up the checks at Mastro's. You know, oh yeah, I don't know, yeah, you take it. You know, you know those people that like, let you pick up the check and they're suddenly missing. Well, that's Elon Musk for you. I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I bet my bottom dollar on it. Unlike Annie, 
Bet your bottom dollar it's okay. All right, never mind. All right, finally, Arc. Um, this is a holding company of the formerly very canonized uh, Kathy Wood. She has bought all of the hip, trendy, cool, neat stocks, including all those Chinese stocks that went down uh, when uh, China, China declared war on its own economy. So this thing's down 50%. Wouldn't you have loved to have bought this thing and held it, bought the future, and saw the future uh, create a 50% poor environment for you? That's what you're looking at here. But the future's gonna make you 50% poor. Sorry about that. Um, Dow Jones Industrials are starting to, to, to break down here. Uh, they are still the strongest. Uh, they have a lot of, what I would call, they have some of the strongest companies in there. Literally, consumer product companies are about it. Okay, and oil companies just so happens that the Dow has a couple of those. Um, they do have banks too, and, but banks are starting to curl over, possibly. We'll see. And we're going to get to that in just a second. All right. Uh, the NASDAQ 100, ding, ding, ding. All right. Ding, 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 ding. I think this thing's cooked. And the reason I think it's cooked is because no one else thinks it's cooked. You know, it, it just, it is too high. The valuations are there. The momentum is not there. The volume picked up and it has bottoms below bottoms and tops below tops, the very definition of a bear market. Now, this thing hasn't gone on very long, so we'll see. It's made a rounded top as well, uh, or a head and shoulders are kind of the same. And I'm, I wanna show you what a rounded top is, you know, just to refresh your memory. It's basically like a parabola like this. You know, if you throw a ball up in the air, which I'll, I'll do in just a moment, but if you throw a ball up in the air, it will make a parabolic, it runs out of momentum, it goes up at first, it uh, decelerates, and then comes back down, accelerate. Uh, that's very, very often a reliable topping pattern, which uh, sometimes called head and shoulders, sometimes rounded top, or a bottoming pattern. You can have something that kind of does one of these little saucer bottoms, okay? So that's kind of cool. So I just, so I just get to do this and, oh, Jesus Christ, that was, a, that was a 13th century Ming lamp. Oh my God. Oh God. Where, 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 where are my, where are my sedatives when I need them? All right, never mind. Okay, so with that, um, S&P small cap uh, doesn't look terrible, but it has made a top below a top. And I suspect that this thing is going to uh, follow suit down. It has been in a sideways pattern for a long time. So it's underperformed uh, the major indexes. It has not gone up. It's just gone sideways for months and months and months and months and months. And if this thing does break down, everybody in that bull pattern, in that uh, sideways flag pattern, is going to be underwater. And I think it's going to happen. So, you know, that's where the d dynamics occur. S&P 500 is just testing support. It, in my mind, it is likely to go down and it is likely to um, just be the strongest of the indexes for right now, but the Dow's actually stronger. So we'll sort of see what happens here. Uh, you know, there, there tends to be a rotation between value and strength and this and that and, you know, those stupid terms they analysts all use. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Oh yeah. Um, uh, we're recommending uh, uh, value stocks right now. Uh, how do you define that? Uh, let me look. That's kind of <laughs> double talk you get from them. All right. Um, Dow Jones Transportations are starting to look like they may break down, and they're critical. They've been somewhat holding up pretty well. They haven't made a new high. That's also very important because of the Dow Industrials making a new high. Uh, they have not. So we're gonna we're gonna see. We're gonna. You know, keep an eye out. They haven't broken decisively yet, but this is something you would have to see or you'd, you'd want to see uh, for the market to go down. Um, okay, so we're going to go on to cryptos because you want them so much. You know, anybody that doesn't own a crypto is a knucklehead. That, that's all I hear. I must be the dumbest guy on planet Earth because dumb me, I did a little research in these and Bitcoin bites back. If you can refute any of that stuff, I'd love to hear it. Cause no one can, you know, <laughs> no one can hear, no one can refute it. This company has no management. It is the, some guy is kind of halfway running it from the Bahamas. He's an ex felon in California, by the way. 
Okay, so Bitcoin Cash, there you go. Um, Ethereum also is made a series of higher, uh, lower highs, higher lows. Uh, it's holding up pretty well, but one has to ask, is Mark Cuban as hip now as he was a little while ago? I don't know, he was pretty hip. You know, he's kind of the opposite of me. I'm anti-hip, unhip, about as unhip as you can be, boring, old, like a fossil, you know how it is. At least I tell the truth, all right? Okay, Litecoin, I, I said this last week, getting lighter all the time. Here's another one that, again, uh, my question to you is, um, if you, has anyone ever used Litecoin for something? Like, to buy anything? No, you use it to gamble. That's all you do. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I don't believe this is the future. I really don't. I may be a curmudgeon and all that, but there's nothing that tells me it is. There's 11,000 of these. How hard can it be to get in the, the space of cryptocurrencies if 11,000 people could do it and not make a dime anyway? Edit. You know, it just, it's beyond me, all right? Um, Ripple is another one. Uh, this one's a legitimate company, or so to speak. Actually does have a parent company behind it. It's, it's more of a token. So, you know, it's not really a fantasy company. And it's uh, one of those companies, actually, the uh, crypto does provide a service. The service is a free trip to Mexico for your money, you know, without going through the SWIFT system. So, um Coinbase, uh, the uh, broker dealer of cryptos, is not looking so good, approaching its new lows. Oh my God, you know, you had to own this thing. Look, it's down like 50%. But boy, were you stupid to not own this as a future. Okay, when people start thinking that way, this is the result. That's what I want to tell you. When everybody thinks it is a no-brainer of a trade to own something, it is destiny, and you're an idiot if you don't own it. That's when I'd get concerned. And right now, one of the reasons I am concerned is that thought, and the thought that somehow we can just, you know, have incredible budget deficits on and on and on and on and on and on, and interest rates will magically accommodate us and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if that'll happen that way, but we'll see. Um, I don't know how a country runs itself this way. Uh, if you were basically right now, okay, the country spends seven billion in government spending. Four, I'm sorry, trillion. You know, I throw I throw it around pretty soon. It'll be quadrillion, but uh, they they spend about seven trillion, and in um, revenues they get about four. Now let's say that you, you know, at home were budgeting and you you earned 40,000 a year, okay? 40,000 a year. And you had $70,000 in expenses. How long would you stay not bankrupt? That's all I want to know. And and secondly, how would you make the decision to actually do that? Pull the trigger and actually so mismanage financial assets that you can't even think of the harm you're causing to people. Vote out the incumbents, okay? That's why I'm, that's why it's so damn important. They're getting their nose into into the the markets. They're less free every time. Vote out the incumbents. All right, Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETF uh, down forty percent. Aren't you glad you bought this thing on the opening? Oh God, you made a good, good, good um, choice. Just when everybody wanted it, had to have it. You couldn't go wrong with it. It was going to be worth a million dollars of Bitcoin, you know, in the year. Oh, and here's the Bitcoin um, 10 crypto index fund. I'm surprised, uh, the Bitwise, I'm surprised they could find 10. They trade enough to do this, but the point is, this one's down 85%. Wouldn't you have liked to have bought this on the opening and lost 85%? What kind of future is that? Yeah. I mean, how is it the future when people lose 85% a year? That's my question. Uh, isn't the idea to buy low, sell high? I thought so. But that's clearly not what's going on here. But you can't find anybody that is just, yet, it hasn't hit them yet. You know, it's like a wily e. Coyote moment. It hasn't hit them. And they're looking, they're going, oh my God, they're about to fall off the cliff. And that's what's happening. So, you know, 
I hope, you, I hope anyone that has the sense, you know, to look into this has the sense, please do. It'll make this all worthwhile, okay? That's what I'm here for. I'm here to, you know, I'm not here to, you know, necessarily make money. I, I will try to do that. We have to pay the bills. But right now, this is all a public service announcement. Um, and I'm just trying to keep people from getting fleeced, all right? That's, that's all I'm trying to do. Overstock.com, here's another company that accepted grip. And they, they've had less than one half of 1% of their revenues in Bitcoin. They accepted Bitcoin. One half of 1%, okay? Less than. Gee, how useful. MicroStrategy, here's another one now. MicroStrategy, um, it doesn't, I didn't put this on the chart, I meant to. But they just issued a bond six and a quarter secured bond to buy more crypto. Okay, they're leveraging to buy crypto. It's already volatile enough, but adding leverage, okay, you're gonna lose value really fast and you're still gonna have to pay off that debt. That is a ridiculous corporate move. I'm sorry, I don't know Michael Saylor personally. Maybe there was something behind it. All I know is this, leverage, kills people when they become overconfident, complacent, they leverage something, they borrow against it, and that means, oh my God, kaput. Riot blockchain, here's another place. I, the holders of this thing ought to be starting a riot. I know blockchain is supposed to be the great technology. Well, I don't know. I mean, again, I don't know what blockchain is that makes it so valuable, but look, if it was that valuable, would this thing be going down and acting like a piece of, you know what? U.S. dollar index. Now, this was a surprise. It broke down last, um, you know, the end of uh, last week. And it, it, it held its uptrend. Uh, it held its uptrend nicely. But be careful. You know, there's a, a tug of war here going on between um, sentiment or complacency or the universal notion, which I happen to hold myself which we can't make it right. But the fact of the matter is, I thought the dollar was was basically confetti or toilet paper. Well, how it's held up is beyond me. I think the only way it's done so is because we have a positive interest rate and Europe has a negative one. You know, if you go to Germany and you give them, um, you know, you give them $100 with no interest payments, you'll get 97 in 10 years. How's that a good deal? Okay, that's all I wanna know. Who in their right mind would do that only the U.S. government that I can think of, and I don't think they're buying German bonds right now. So, I, I just don't know. Um, this is a five dollar. Uh, I'm sorry, the the, the uh, weekly uh, index for the uh, U.S. dollar. It's going up uh, pretty nicely. It's held up very well. It could break up and break positive. It could break down and break negative. We'll watch it very carefully. Right now, the fact of the matter is, it's held up despite all the dollars that have been put in circulation uh, through things like <laughs> checks. Ugh, I still have trouble saying that. You know, my shrink says I ought to be meditating more often. I ought to start doing that because uh, I hate this. I'd get some Valium. Can, can, can you have me some Valium, please? Okay, I'm just going to go on here. All right. Uh, CRB Commodities Index. Uh, this is breaking up. As we believed, inflation is still starting to move ahead. Again, this has had an amazing move. Agriculture fund, food, and food is going up. Here's the funny thing. Um, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, was released this week. X food and energy. Gee, we don't need transportation, and we don't eat. And they don't put, they don't put housing costs in there, too. So I think it, all it includes are peanut butter sandwiches. And, um, but the Agriculture Fund will show you the food prices are indeed going up. If you go to McDonald's, and you decide to do that, which I occasionally do on a guilty pleasure. Well, uh, sorry, to, sorry to say that, but uh, food prices are going up like crazy and that's all there is to it. And they're also expanding margins and we're gonna see that because they're not able to, um, the, the, uh, the, even though there's a shortage of people working, supposedly, uh, they're not really going for higher wages while um, certain places are going for higher prices. So margins are expanding. <sighs> Corn, uh, important because it's a sweetener and it is universal. Uh, methanol, ethanol, uh, you know, has a lot of uses. 
And so corn is something that's a critical thing to watch. Uh, it looks like it's breaking out. I don't like this look at all. Sugar, ah, sugar. Do, 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 do. Ah, honey, honey. You have to be really old to remember that song by the Archies, 1969. Um, anyway, sugar is broken down. And uh, again, it is so omnipresent in different foods that, you know, that may be uh, a bad omen. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, wheat, too, it doesn't look particularly good. So, again, that's another uh, agricultural commodity. Soy, another one, not looking great. Again, not looking great. Lumber is looking great. I don't know why, but you know, this thing has had a hell of a round trip in the last year. I'm not even sure exactly what the hell lumber's up on now, other than uh, maniacal inflation and people wanting to finish homes and there being a shortage of lumber, not being able to finish a house. So you'll pay anything for that last board, that last plywood board of lumber. Uh, that, that's the way it works. You know, if you have a deadline, you got to build the house, you're, you're behind because for some reason I'm hearing the industry is behind. I don't understand that, but it is behind. And well, the reason it's behind is because prices keep going up. And that's the belief is that they're going up because there's a shortage. No, they're going up because there's inflation. <sighs> All right. Livestock, beyond burger aside, this thing, you know, livestock's going up. We may have plant burgers all over the place and people like these things, but, um, you know, for some reason, uh, it's, livestock's doing really well. And, you know, we speculated very early that, you know, the whole craze of plant-based meat was not going to last simply because it's a bunch of chemicals, okay? It's not all you are saving an animal from being killed. That's that's true, but it's not a health food. OK, and it may have other things about it that you don't know out of those 27 chemicals. I just don't know. You know, I went the other day and uh, almost watched cable news as a result. And, you know, cable news is the leading cause of mental illness. And, uh, you know, I accidentally watched it I, for a few minutes. I just I couldn't help myself. OK, base metals are um, again, this is showing strength in metals. We're starting to see metals pick up in strength. So energy is starting to do well. Metals are starting to do well. So food is pausing, but that's about it. Copper miners ETF and, uh, you know, where, you'll never take me alive, copper. Oh, that's, a, that's from an old movie. You have to be really old to remember black and white movies, but I do. You know, I was just, uh, I was only in my 20s uh, when they came out. You'll never get me alive, copper. Okay. Uh, but these uh, copper is becoming omnipresent. It's everywhere. It's becoming sort of a new gold because it is has so many uses in terms of electrical wiring, semiconductors, EV cars. Okay. That is going to increase the demand for copper right there. Okay. So uh, this thing ought to be a very good barometer of, um, of inflation. I think it still is. I think it's breaking up right now. Freeport McMoran is probably one of the, the big copper, gold, base metals companies. This is a terrific company. And it looked like it had broken down, but it looks like it's ready for another leg up. And that's what we circled there. It's right at its highs. This thing just may go up. I don't know how copper's going to go down. I really don't. Maybe that's getting too complacent. I don't know. But it just, it just looks like there's so much demand for it right now and so many dollars chasing a limited supply, it's just gotta go up. Alcoa is, you know, uh, they make um, aluminum cans. And because of that, uh, with, I don't even wanna, I'm not gonna use this word, but with the, um, you know, with the shortage of economic activity brought about by certain factors beyond our control, um, People have uh, taken to storing food, and aluminum tin is uh, incredibly good for doing that, you know, for intermediate term storage. So that's another reason that, you know, that this is going up. It's not, you know, aluminum is used more in foods than it is as a building material. And it is sometimes used as a building material, but it has a food packaging thing. So I think this could be an indicator of that. Um, Crude oil, yes, X food and energy. Crude oil is going up, but you know we don't use it. Sorry, we don't use it. I just want you to know we don't use it. And John Williams, 
uh, he's going to explain to you how exactly they took food and energy out of here when they when they talk about inflation because uh, you know it's beyond me. Oh no, no food and energy anymore. Um, and uh, no rents and um, everything else. Uh, everything else is normal. Yeesh. Gasoline that's moving up too. Man, what would you expect? You know what would you expect? Uh, natural gas. Well, it looked like it came up, then it came down. I'm going to say this. this. The winter is bound to be cold. I don't, you know, I have no specific knowledge on why. Other than the fact it's the winter and it's cold. But I'm feeling it's going to be an extraordinarily bad winter. And the supplies of natural gas are not plentiful. And so there's going to be some kind of short squeeze engineered on this. The Russians have such a, a, a lock over it that, you know, they can easily shut the valves off. And Europe, well... We're going to be kind of cold, okay? Get the blankets. That's what it's going to be. Um, all right, gold. Now, this is interesting. I mentioned last week the surprise is going to be and rallying gold this year and the precious metals. I still believe that. I'm seeing positive signs on the charts, but it's a little too early. I would not want to jump the gun. We've done it before, and it didn't work out too well. Oops. All right, and but it, this thing does look like a bullish wedge, and... Gold is so out of favor. See, it's as much out of favor as Bitcoin's in favor. Oh, I'm not on Bitcoin, but I'm never on gold. <clears throat> well, you know, that's the kind of time you want to get into gold because what do you do to make money? Buy low, sell high. Simple as that. All right. Um, again, gold, uh, longer term perspective. Again, very, very positive. Silver, also positive. It's in a cup and handle stra um, formation. Those are very positive uh, type of uh, long run consolidations. This one should go up. It also has industrial use in solar panels, which uh, are very interesting because my, my, favorite, my favorite entrepreneur makes those. And you know, of course, solar panels are famous for, <laughs> for basically not being able to convert a large percentage of energy. Maybe it's gotten higher, but I can tell you this, I had solar panels. What a waste of money. That's all, that's all I can say. Um, palladium is actually coming down a little bit. It's in EVs. I expect this will rally, actually. Uh, platinum is looking like it's in a positive formation. This is more of a precious metal. It's kind of come in. It looks a lot like the gold pattern that I showed you earlier. Uh, now, going on the interest rates, again, more exciting news. I would never expect. Uh, Jay Powell, are you listening? I don't know if you are, but uh, you said uh, federal funds at zero to 0.25 percent for a while. First, um, first increase in uh, rates in June of 2022. No, thank you. I don't think so. I think the market is going to force them upon you. I've been saying this for months. You're going to see more rate increases than you ever thought. You ain't seen nothing yet because we have inflation. We have rates that are low. We can't raise them because we're going to make the government deficit out of control. Oh, what a nice box we put ourselves into. Haven't we, Jay? Couldn't happen to a better guy. All right. Uh, Five-year treasuries are also moving up, and they're very positive. They've moved up quite a bit in the last year. So, you know, we're starting to see, we're starting to see interest rates that are, uh, treasury rates go up. We're starting to see other things like a softening economy that is bringing down demand and therefore uh, somewhat tempering inflation, but it's a demand-driven depression recession type of thing while you're having the overall level of, of um, you know, um, inflation rise. And that's basically what we're looking at. That's called stagflation. I lived through it. Sometimes it's called hyperinflation, stagflation. Sometimes it's called other things. Uh, I've been called all sorts of things, so I want to repeat that. Um, but the 10-year Treasury yield, it's just broken out. This is a long way to go, okay? The interesting thing is going to be, if, if it does go up quite a bit, uh, how can we possibly not have an explosion in the budget deficit? I mean, it took 1.1% in 2026 to make it unreasonably, ridiculously high. 30-year um, Treasuries... They look like they're breaking back up again. And part of it, I think, is the fact that the Fed doesn't make much intervention on this long of a dated paper. Uh, you know, you, the government wants to fi finance at the low end. 
you know, they let they want to finance, you know, basically, uh, you know, the short end where interest rates are almost non-existent. Well, that's not going to happen for too long. And so, um, you know, <laughs> it ought to be interesting. That's all I got to say. Um, now, this is something we found too. The zero to five year uh, tips bond ETF. So this is like a short term consumer price index adjusted ETF. Okay, so this would be something you would own as a hedge against inflation. Not a great one because you got the CPI and uh, it measures uh, peanut butter sandwiches and that's about it. But uh, the bullish flag uh, looks good and it suggests to me that uh, this thing's going to have another move up. So we'll see. We'll watch it out. But we found it. We found this thing and thought we'd add this into the mix. Uh, Treasury inflation securities, they're critical support. That makes sense uh, that they would be. They've been going up like crazy. Everybody's been talking about inflation. Of course, a lot later than we have. We talked about it last summer. Ugh. That's okay. That's what we're here for. Make sure that you know where to go to get accurate information. But um, tips are basically at critical support at 125. I expect they'll resume up. Uh, they'll resume upward. Uh, Barclays Hyde uh, Bond Fund also looks like it made a triple top. And it is a long way to go. Not only might we have a recession and companies go bankrupt and companies like MicroStrategy who have now leveraged a Bitcoin purchase, okay? <laughs> the perfect candidate for it. Or all the companies that are buying their own stock in and it's too many to, to, to even mention. Oh, and they'll go bankrupt pretty soon because they they'll, they'll have run out of money. Just like GE almost did. And unfortunately, they get bailed out. You know, they buy their own stock back, they imperil shareholders in so doing, okay? They buy it to try to raise the stock price, sure, but that's because their compensation is tied to the stock, okay? It is not a, any altruistic um, motives, you know, to make sure that the stock price is high. They could just invest and operate the company well. God, what a concept. Operate the company well. Oh, my God. I got to write that down. I gotta write that. I, I gotta tell him. I should tell Zuckerberg that when I when I talk to him tonight. No, oh God, I'm not gonna talk to him. Don't even think about it. All right, Dow Jones Utilities. This is another interest sensitive thing. Um, I'm gonna guess it's a combination of in, not of interest rates, but um, it's really now the pressure on utilities that are gonna be put upon to generate electricity for all the EVs on the road. Okay. These are the same EVs that have made uh, China like a pea soup to walk around in. Okay, you need like a pea soup. You need goggles practically to walk around in. And you know, of course, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, they uh, they love that. That's that's all good stuff because they get to make the battery. Okay, good. And and so I'm going to say this one more time. This is not an eco-friendly vehicle. Okay. Just because it's electric doesn't mean that it's eco-friendly. It creates more pollution in the long run when you take everything into account, more pollution than a gas than a gas engine. Okay? And that is the that is the simple truth. And I don't care what Elon Musk says, he's never even addressed the question. Because Ace Ace is the biggest fan of Elon Musk. Oh god, do we argue about that? Ace quiet. He's a con man and you know it, and he's never taking you to the moon or Mars. Jeez, unbelievable. Anyway, stop. Oh, God. he just he wants to defend him. But anyway, um, utilities, new electricity, there's going to be a demand for power. That is going to require coal to be burned. Gee, didn't we have the declaration that there would be no coal industry anymore because it was so polluting? Yeah, I guess not. I guess not. Uh, CME Group. Now, we've talked about uh, some of these indicators of different um, exchanges, okay? And they were all in bullish patterns. Now, that was interesting because at the time when I showed that, I said, well, I can't see the market going down yet uh, as long as these patterns are bull bullish. CME Group is commodities. It is in a bullish pattern. Commodities are in a bullish trend, okay? Uh, now, if you look at this, this is the ICE, the owner of the New York Stock Exchange. Look at that, it just broke down. It was screaming. It was just zooming up like crazy. All of a sudden, it broke down. So it no longer has that support. And that's the kind of thing that is confirming the fact that the market is indeed turning. Okay? And this is one of those things. Sometimes you have to look at other 
um, a lot of other data points because it's not straightforward. We have a lot of charts today. I'm going to keep going here no matter what. But ICE is another indicator. And so is this, NDAQ. This is the uh, holder of the NASDAQ. And this thing was going up like uh, on a tear. And look at that. All of a sudden, it's broken down. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. So if you're still holding on to your overvalued tech stock, that you, you know, I don't know, I don't want to think about that. All right, this is the IPO ETF, all right? This is another sort of off the run indicator. Now, the IPO ETF, this is all the IPOs, all the overhyped th things came into this thing, and it's down a nice 50%. Wouldn't you have just loved to own a basket of failed EPOs, IPOs, that is? Well, right here. And how this doesn't get noticed, and it's already down 50%, and it's already telling you the market is kaput, all right? That's what it's telling you if you'd only listen. Well, uh, telling me pretty softly, so who knows? All right. Uh, well, that's the same thing. Uh, we're going to go on to Costco. Retail is getting clobbered. Another reason we said it last week. We're going to say it right now. Retail is, has got a problem. It's got a major problem. It had a blow-off rally, and possibly because of some stimulation of the economy, uh, that went into some retailers. I don't know. There was a burst of activity. You know, oh, God, the GDP is, like, growing like gangbusters. No, it's not. Who the hell's working? You know, you grow a GDP when you produce more things, not when you consume more things, when you produce more things. And right now, the Port of California is going to, or Los Angeles is going to tell you with a hundred container ships waiting and in queue, okay, somebody else had to produce those goods. That's who's, that's who's actually getting economic wealth as a result. Not us. Not us. Home Depot, another one that broke down, okay. Uh, almost every retailer is breaking down really fast really suddenly, ones that have executed, and all of a sudden they're way down in the blink of an eye. And that's why it's so important to sell early if you can. I know it's hard to do psychologically because you go, damn, I should have sold, I should have, I should have waited and held. I've done that a million times. I've made that mistake a million flipping times. But you know what? You don't regret taking a profit. You never regret taking a profit. You regret taking a loss because you didn't sell early enough but you'll never regret taking a profit, at least later on when you've gotten yourself set. You know, but the, the human instinct of, oh God, I should have held on to it. That's what's gonna happen to Bitcoin and people ride it all the way down. All right, Home Depot, not looking good at all. Look at that, that, uh, that move on Friday, not good. Uh, Target, here's another one. This thing was going up like gangbusters. It was executing well, it, it had a great um, online uh, presence, uh, apparently, uh, not good enough. So, and there is a slowdown in the economy, I believe. We should be seeing it right now, whether or not the media tells you about it. We're going to see it. All right. GDP does not compute. I will talk about it in another show. But right now, the, the numbers do not compute. And I don't know how the hell we're hearing about this economy growing when there's no one working. And we don't, have enough, we don't even have as many workers as we had a few years ago. Now, how is that possible? They suddenly get better at what they did? All right. Um, Nordstrom, here's another one fell off the cliff. It, it just, you know, this is a prestige retail. Uh, uh, it really is. And it kind of goes to show, you know, just how solid of a company can get just beaten to death now and how tricky these moves are. I mean, look at the gap that there is in this thing. You know, you'd have to sell early. You can't sell after the gap. That's the problem. You know, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. That's all I got to say, other than vote out all the incumbents. That I'm going to continue to say until I'm blue in the face. Nobody better pour blue dye on me. That's all I got to say. All right, so Walmart actually looking still constructive, but it's the only one that is. And so I put it in here. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you have contrary indicators. It's still, you know, performing, behaving relatively well. Uh, the retail ETF, this is all of them together. And look at that. That is a hell of a rounded top. 
And again, uh, I gotta throw the ball. Uh, again, oh God, I hope that that base can be you know glued together. Anyway, the retail ETF. Look at that broad, rounded top. Okay, retail seventy percent of the economy. Okay, if they if these types of companies do not do well, the consumer isn't doing well, and the consumer is basically the husky that pulls the sled. I mean, basically that's that's the case. You know, it's not savers because they punish them with low rates. You know, they, they'll talk about, you know, the government will talk about, oh, yeah, I mean, we want to preserve Social Security and all this other kind of stuff because we love our old people. And then you punish them for saving. And then you hold in Social Security 2% uh, yielding bonds. Okay, meanwhile, inflation's at 8. And you're lying about both. Okay. Uh, that is what I would call humanitarian government. <laughs> they just got to go. They got to go. They got to go. They got to go. All right, let's keep going. MasterCard is also important because it's a credit card company, and that one looks like it is broken down out of an ascending wedge, which is typically a reversal pattern. Uh, Visa is um, bounced down off of its declining trend line. It is in a bear market too. You have MasterCard, you have Visa, two companies that handle process an awful lot of transactions, just like Bitcoin. Not. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really funny. Can you imagine going into a place and actually paying something, somebody with a Bitcoin? I really can't. First of all, it doesn't exist, so you can't even pay with it anyway. I guess you have to write down the uh, password because that's really what you're selling. And I still have a sale. We have an after Christmas sale on passwords. We're, we will get you the best damn password you've ever had, better than a, you know, than a wallet or anything like that. $10,000. That's it. Two for $19,999, and that's my final offer, okay? So don't come crying to me that you didn't get a password for cheap because I was prepared to provide one to you, I think. All right, American Express, look at that. On Friday, also did dive down. It was making a rounded top again. And look at the volume. I circled that at the bottom. American Express, rest in peace. Apple is the first $1 trillion company. Seven, I'm sorry, $3 trillion company. Um, it might as well be a country. It does just about everything. Um, I don't know what it doesn't do, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, right now, it broke out out of an ascending, um, what, um, ascending flag. And the reason, I mean, you know, the reason is easy to see. If you look at the graph, if you look at the chart, it takes more of a burst to move up than down, especially after you've gone up for so long. Apple is a company that buys its stock back in droves, and it's probably an exception to the rule in that uh, it's gone up, it's gone up, it's gone up, it's gone up, it's gone up. You know, they just give me an iPhone and cheap, that'd be great. You know, that'd be more than happy. And I'm not a big fan of iPods. You know, those things fall out of my ears. But, you know, they've done well. Can't give them a hard time about that. You know, so Google is finally turning over. And uh, I'll try not to glisten too much here because they own a certain uh, subsidiary uh, that we just love, actually. And Google's in like every business, okay? They they have uh, you know robo taxis, you name it. the the search The search business is now less than half of its value. The one that posts videos, which you all know, is actually worth probably more than half of of Google. And wait till the that robot car comes out. Who knows? It might, you know, might not be anything left. Amazon looks like it's breaking down to me. Okay, it, it hasn't broken down in a big way, but again, it's tied to retail, number one. Okay, so retailers, you know, it has such a big market share that it cannot grow its market share in the face of declining demand. That's what you have to understand. It has to go into new businesses. It has to do other things like that. But if there's declining demand on a retail basis, uh, retail basis, it's the market. So it's got to go down with it. In the past, Amazon would actually go up because it always would gain market share against other feeble competitors. So that was one of the reasons that it kept going up. That is no longer the case. You know, everybody's online and, you know, a lot of retailers are online. They can't even sell anything normally, just like Nordstrom's. Uh, Nordstrom's is online. Walmart's online. Target's online. Everybody's online, and that's uh, you know that, that's basically it. it. They no longer have that competitive advantage. 
Oh, I love talking about this company. Oh, this just made my day. Uh, Meta Platforms, formerly known as Facebook. And here's what, here's the latest in news about Mr. Zuckerberg and Facebook. The FTC is now suing to break them up. So not only are they lying sacks of you know what with their fact checkers, which they're also being sued about, they're gonna have to break up the company. I, I don't know if they're gonna have to exactly, but the sentiment is not good. Mark Zuckerberg is universally loathed. You know, it's not just the hoot loot people that don't like him. We had a poll, he was voted worst executive of the year. You know, Ace was adamant about it. But I'll tell you this right now. Uh, He's just beginning to have trouble. Wait till he has some class action lawsuits from, from the mental illness he's caused. You know, teenage girls that have already been acknowledged, okay? They're internal memos. I mean, that's a class action lawsuit if there ever was one, okay? And Facebook came in, uh, Hoot did a um, poll. It's the number two leading cause of mental illness. So the worst thing you can ever do is be on Facebook watch uh, cable news and you are kaput let me tell you that right there it <laughs> there's no vaccine for it there's no nothing for it it is it is incurable it's like looking at uh i don't know when sodom and gomorrah when they looked at the the fireball it's kind of like that you know, uh, okay and thank god i'm still in uh i'm still able to to come to you and uh despite all that i'm a tough guy you know i would do anything for you guys you know you know, I, I, I risk danger all the time. And, um, you know, I'm here because, well, let's face it, I'm also, well, if I were a woman, I'd be all over me. But, you know, it is what it is. I try to stay modest. So, anyway, the fact checkers, non-existent. I think they're going to end up working as checkers in a supermarket or something like that. I don't know. They really, <laughs> I just don't know. I don't even know if they're employees there. You can't get customer service at Facebook to save your life, okay? It's, it's really pretty unbelievable. All right. Um, Netflix um, is coming down now. A lot of the um, sort of stay-at-home type plays, Netflix was one, you know, and we're going to show you some others. This is actually, um, you know, come down has come down quite hard, and it's it's worth looking at. The streaming space is full, okay. And I'm going to show you um, another streaming company in a minute. But between Roku and Peacock and Hulu and this and that. You know, th there are so many streaming companies. Content, oh, there's Apple TV, okay? There's there's so many. Content is in very short supply that's quality. Like this show, for example, we would be a prime candidate for one of those content makers. And because uh, we are, we inform, we amuse, but we never mislead. All right, Netflix, not doing so hot. Uh, NVIDIA has been the poster child for, for chips. And chips are really indicative of the economy. Uh, NVIDIA has become sort of a, a darling, again, because it's in cryptos and gaming chips. So what it does is it appeals to millennials who are sitting in their, in their basements, you know. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of it, you know, the millennials sitting in their basements doing you know what. Anyway, uh, NVIDIA, I happen to have an NVIDIA chip on my computer. It's a terrific chip. Uh, one of the things that is very important to distinguish is how quality a company is versus the price. You can overpay for anything. Mercedes-Benz may be good at 20000 and it's a horrible thing at 100000 So it's very important to put anything in that perspective because if you don't put it in that perspective, uh, the direction it's heading may not be indicative in an accurate way. It could be going up but already discounted for in its earnings. And I suspect that may have happened to a lot of companies that, that we're going to see. Um, Ford Motor, oh, amazing. This old stodgy company, uh, would, it, you know, I just don't know what to say. They converted completely to EVs. And so, you know, one can see, one can envision a catastrophe coming. Lots of empty, CV, of empty uh, EVs, unsold, inventory, you name it, or the price of electricity goes up because all of a sudden they have to ration it out. I really, this is, this is not a free lunch, okay? That's one of the problems, is that it's so easy to think of it as a free lunch. Oh my God, we're just cleaning up the planet. No, you're not cleaning up the planet. 
the same chemicals existed today as existed yesterday. Okay? That's all there is to it. Okay? You're not going to get any kind of change of matter that's actually going to make a difference. And actually, you're going to lose energy upon the conversion. You're going to have to build plants again. Who wants to do that? Okay? We haven't built them in like 20... We not only haven't built them in like 27 years, we have maintained them for 25 years. Because, of course, government would like to spend, as you saw in the beginning, they want to spend on getting reelected. And that's all they care about. Okay? Vote out the incumbents. I don't care what party you are. Okay? It's not going to help to, have to put in Republicans. They may go in. They may go in. But you know what? The minute they get comfortable, it's like, hey, I kind of like it in here. It's kind of cushy. You make a lot of money in here. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Insider trading stock tips and you get to molest the staffers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like this job. I'm not going to vote for term limits. Are you kidding? Who the hell would do that? I get a pension. I get all this money. I get uh, personal appearances. <sighs> if only I could find a job like that. Um, Toyota, here's another, here's another motor company that has all of a sudden you know, gone through EV madness. Domino's, the pizza, the pizza company, and now has a robotic delivering uh, type of vehicle. And what's interesting about that is if you think about it, okay, they have a delivery service and an, a, a robot car, okay? Think about DoorDash and the valuations of Uber and Lyft and everything like that, all right? And McDonald's doesn't have it. It should be worth, I don't know, $100, $150 billion. I doubt it's worth it. I doubt, I believe it's a private company. But the point of the matter is everybody wants to go electric. Even John Deere, if you've ever ridden on one of their little tractors, those are going electric. Okay? Because people just don't want to work. They don't want to shovel snow. What's the matter with them? What's the matter with not wanting to shovel snow? Make a man out of you. Well, Somebody else, because I'll never shovel snow. All right. Um, the bank index. Now, it started to vault up, but look at that curl over on the last day. And so we're just going to hold that in abeyance. The bank index and financials may not be going up any further. We're, we're going to see a little evidence of that. Some have, some haven't, but it doesn't look the same. And with, if the yield curve is actually flattening, which is what it looks like, Three month bills, 115, uh, two, uh, 30 years uh, bonds at uh, a little over two, so it's less than 1%. It used to be about one and a half. Uh, that is typically in concert with a recession, an oncoming recession, and it also tends to move inversely with uh, bank earnings. They uh, borrow at the short end at nothing from the Fed. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a vendor selling you their product for nothing? <sighs> what a deal they have, huh? In any event, uh, and they lend on the long end, and they edge it, and you know they make a little spread, and they do it in size, and it's all good, you know. And they pay the, they basically have to pay uh, depositors nothing, and that's another good, another good deal. Uh, but they do all charge you for services, <laughs> that they won't forget about. All right, uh, but I digress. The broker dealer index um, still looking healthy. I don't know if it will. They certainly sell SpaceX for $100 billion, which they're talking about doing. Oh, God, that might, might be another payday. I don't think so. I actually don't think a lot of new issues are going to come to market. There will not be the liquidity to allow it to happen. Berkshire Hathaway. I, I've got to salute Warren Buffett on this. I didn't used to be his biggest fan. I, I, honest to God, you know, I thought he was lucky, you know, which is kind of what someone says when they're kind of jealous. Warren is the ultimate value investor. And you cannot argue with this chart right there. Brand new high. This guy's been doing it for 30 years. Yeah, he might have a little advantage in that uh, his size, the sheer size of the cash that he has, allows him to do deals that other people can't do. So he gets favorable terms. So that part is something that, you know, can be uh, criticized. But on the other hand, you know, I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather join him than beat him. And, you know, he's, he can't argue with success. You know, that's all there is to it. You can't argue with success. I will try to, but I always lose that argument like I do when I argue with myself. I've never won a single argument against myself. And I always come up with something that invalidates my thesis. So, whatever. 
home builders, um, once again, lumber, copper, costing a lot of money, and uh, projects are not getting completed. So that's a very interesting case. Uh, Dow Jones REIT index, uh, REIT is another uh, real estate type of play. The real estate is, in my opinion, the best edge. Houses will always be needed. They will always have a use. Not speculative housing like in Las Vegas, where people were buying $600,000 condos that had just sold for $100,000. That's called greed. That's called stupid. And that is what we see today. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, house will appreciate. It has a use. Rents are going up. You can always get more cash flow out of a house. I understand a house. I don't understand a cryptocurrency in that way. Where the hell do you get the cash flow? Now, from whom? From what operations? Oh, okay. Oh, gee, guess, guess not. All right, let's keep going. Semiconductors, these are uh, quintessential uh, to, to the market. They are probably the biggest, most important companies there are. And it is, again, right at support. I expect these to break down. I also expect <laughs> this to be a surplus of semiconductors. So all that we've been hearing about chip shortages, chip shortages, chip shortages, well, of course, the, the natural reaction in the market is for everybody and his brother to, you know, start a new chip plant. And then all, before you know it, uh, the plant's not running. So, that's <laughs> the way it goes. Now, that certainly is not the case with Big Pharma. They always, they always have a new med to give you. You know, you, there's always a, by the way, where's my drug dealer? Um, you know, he's going to come and give me some pills from, uh, you know, from, I thought he works from Big Pharma. You know, they want to control your moods. I mean, after all, we're a bunch of savages and, you know, we're going to go crazy. So let's medicate us while we're at it. You know, like, let's, uh, let's medicate us. I could use that sometime. But I'll tell you, nothing better for Big Pharma than the, than the cold now, as it, uh, as it is now actually called accurately, the cold with so many cases a day. Gee, I've lived through a number of those. I didn't know I was going to die. And I guess it's the people who think they're going to die who die. I don't know. But so many cases, and the hospitals are full up of people with the cold. Since when do you need to go to the hospital for a cold? Only in America. And uh, Big Pharma also. See, this is one of the things about voting out the incumbents. Big Pharma is a huge campaign contribution contributor. To, of all people, Bernie Sanders, the liberal from Vermont, you know, that uh, pals around with Fidel Castro. <sighs> Need I say it? Vote out the incumbents. Bernie Sanders never had a job either, by the way. So many Democrats, or I shouldn't say Democrats, politicians never had a job. Not one job. Never took a W-2 home. Don't understand what it's like in the real world. And they just pontificate like me. I gotta stop doing that. But at least I'm telling you the truth. They lie a lot. You know, what can you do? And strangely, you can't get fired if you're a congressman. The only way to fire them is for us to fire them. Okay? That's why you vote out the incumbents. Because only we can fire them. Only we can enforce term limits down Congress's throats. All right? That's the only way to get them to act um, as fiduciaries in our favor. And it is not a hard concept. So if you can uh, also share this with other people, I'd appreciate it because we have to do this uh, before the next election or democracy is at risk. That's, that's all there is to it or the republic's at risk. It is just not going to be a good situation. All right. Um, gold and silver miners, they're looking pretty good. Um, we will have some as uh, uh, indicated buys in the future, possibly if they become attractive. Uh, big oil, look at that just ran away like crazy, okay? So, you know, again, these guys make inventory profits, okay? So when oil goes up in price, they make a profit on what's in the ground, all right? So these guys, you know, they just can sit there and hold a bunch of oil. A lot of them have, you know, millions of barrels of oil, and so they make money sitting on their hands. And the other thing, which is interesting, is when there's a shortage of, of oil, Okay, like when there was, when there were uh, price controls uh, in the 70s, for those who can remember the 70s. Well, I kind of do remember the 70s, but <laughs> anyway. I was uh, too much Agent Orange in uh, Vietnam, I think. I still wasn't quite there. But in any event, uh, you know, during the, um, you know, the wage price uh, controls on oil windfall profits tax, 
they had no reason to sell it. Okay, so instead of trying to punish the oil companies, which is what politicians do to get reelected, okay, while taking money from them for their own reelection, okay, so it's just it's so funny. It's like, oh yeah, I'll take your hundred million dollars from my pack. <sighs> would you like a would you like a job in my administration? That's pretty much what um, Goldman Sachs and the Department of Treasury do. How many Department of Treasury people have come from Goldman Sachs? Look it up. You'll see it'll blow your mind. In any event, big oil moving up. Uh, thank you, Joe Biden. That release of oil from the strategic petroleum reserves was about the dumbest move I've ever seen. Okay? Please watch this show. Please read an economics book. It would really do you some good. Okay? That's all there is to it. Uh, you know, I know that you're, you know, very uh, energetic man and very with it. And I think you should learn some of these things before it's too late. Uh, UPS, very important company to transport. Uh, again, it's starting to possibly break down. And it, these companies are correlated to the economic activity of retailers. They, they move stuff like you buy on Amazon with a credit card and stuff like that, eBay. So from that standpoint, credit cards, retailers, and um, you know, uh, uh, shippers. And the shippers have higher margins because right now, there's an absolute crunch. So it's a perfect environment for them, except it may be a little annoying, you know, just getting stuck like uh, the hundred cargo ships off the port of Los Angeles. Unreal. Um, FedEx, we, we said was probably bounce. It probably is. I don't, FedEx does not quite have the, the cachet that UPS does. And uh, I look at this and I think it's in a bear flag. I don't think it necessarily broke out. Uh, you know, if you buy the thesis that the economy is weakening, which I do, which I will continue to purport until proven otherwise, uh, this company has to be affected. All there is to it. Nothing more, nothing less. The price of gasoline going up, that ain't going to help either. Price of labor going up, that ain't going to help either. Now, we're going to talk about some of the uh, hip, trendy stocks here. Beyond me. What could be more trendy than beyond me? Plant-based hamburgers. Oh my God, everybody had to have one. I gotta try one. You ever tried Morningstar Farms? That's been around for like 15 years and it's damn good. I don't know who makes them, but you can find them and you don't need, you don't need this. I don't think, I doubt there's many chemicals in it. This thing is basically a hodgepodge. It's like Frankenstein. It's like Frankenstein burger. You know, you just basically make it in a lab and you put all these spare parts in there and all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, it tastes just like a burger. You know, people are not impressionable. Not at all. All right. Um, Disney in that crowded, crowded space of streaming that we mentioned before on uh, Netflix. Here's another one. Rounded top. Again, the Disney channel was going to be an amazing revenue source for the company. <sighs> well, maybe not. Competition is what it is. And so many people are rushing into this. You know, that's the thing. Capitalism is about competition, not about protecting large companies from competition like they do with a lot of the big tech companies and the drug companies and you name it. Anybody that's a campaign contrib contributor is going to get protection. Just like the mafia, you know, protection money. Tony Soprano. That, that's true. It is exactly like the mafia. Taxes are protection money. Okay, they're not there, you know, for a reason because there is no mandate before Congress to, you know, to efficiently spend it. They spend seven trillion dollars and get in four trillion. Dumb, dumb. I mean, that's gross negligence. Except they probably, they probably can't be charged with it because they can't be charged with anything. You know, that's the way they are. They're they're above you and I, and we need to salute them. I would give them the salute of sending them packing. All right. Sorry about that. And here's good old Zoom video. Everybody thought this was going to go to a kajillion dollars, and it's down 50% year over year. How many times did I hear Zoom, 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 the stay-at-home trade? I actually was going to put in a Peloton. I forgot to do that. That's another one. Down about 80%. That was such a hip stock. And then all of a sudden, a commercial came out. And Peloton, a commercial came out meaningless commercial came out and everybody got up in arms and the stock has been selling off. 
So um, this is Wayfair. It's an online retailer. Haven't uh, presented it before, but again, um, it is a retailer. They sell uh, home furnishings and other things like that. They had a huge ca uh, market cap. It's a big company. Um, it's probably one of the preeminent uh, online retailers. And this one is just all of a sudden starting to cascade. And again, there's almost all corroborating evidence of that, you know, everywhere we look. Now I'm gonna show you the, the couple of bright things out there. Coca-Cola is going crazy. Maybe people wanna rot their teeth a lot more than they used to. I don't, I'm not quite sure what exactly it would be, but um, I, I will, I'll, it may be because sugar's going down. You know, we saw that earlier. But I'll tell you this, um, people are buying it like crazy. And um, uh, I, just don't, I just don't know what else to say. Coca-Cola is universally distributed. Everywhere I have ever been has Coca-Cola. If you go to Mexico into a, a bullfighting arena, there will be a Coke machine. Okay, they, they distribute everywhere. So, you know, to, it, it doesn't grow volume, but it has to grow in price. That's the only thing it can do or margin. Because it's not like, you know, we're gonna get 10% growth in Coca-Cola. And, you know, same with McDonald's. Doing really well, they're able to raise their prices. I think that uh, McDonald's is actually the, um, in a terrific place because McDonald's is right now, you know, it's one of those things that people will default to, okay? That in, in economics, there's something called a Giffen good, okay? Now, a Giffen good is something you're rolling your eyes about, but it's a good like a, um, like a potato. And you substitute in that good when there are higher prices in general. So McDonald's could benefit from higher prices everywhere else because people don't go to fancy dinners, they go to McDonald's. And that's sub, uh, the substitution effect of a gift and good. So now I've learned a little bit about economics, and uh, that's what we're here for. And Joe Biden, I wish he would tune in. Would somebody wake him up, please? All right. And Nike. <laughs> look, look at this thing. Nike, the $500 shoe. Seriously? Look at this. I, this company is worth like $200 billion for shoes. Okay. I cannot believe it, but kids that are starving, that are poverty stricken, have to have a $500 Michael Jordan special. Unbelievable. And last but not least, Procter & Gamble. Uh, Procter & Gamble is a um, <coughs> distributor of uh, consumer goods. They make an awful lot of them. And again, it is the consumer at uh, certain levels, like Procter & Gamble, it's not a retailer. Okay, you buy Procter & Gamble stuff in a retailer. Uh, and so Procter & Gamble is still doing pretty well, but it's making a little round the top here. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it, it were to come in. So with that, you know, I want to say thank you very much for, for tuning in today. Be informed, be amused, never be misled, and don't ever listen to Ace when it comes to stock advice. God, he's cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're going to get stripped of that consultant thing, you know, you, you know that? And plus, how am I going to replace that damn vase? I was like, uh, it was worth a lot of money. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll just carry on. Please like and subscribe. Please share this with your friends. Please vote out the incumbents. Please listen to this. This is important, important enough for me to come up here week after week after week, despite getting, oh, I just bought some big guys. Uh, you know, I hate to see it happen, but it's gonna happen. And so we've gotta get rid of the incumbents. This easy money culture blinds us to it, and for whatever reason, people don't look at the people don't look at the news like I do, and uh, you know they may get mentally ill, but they sure as hell don't know it. With that, I'm going to say goodbye. We'll see you soon, and um, you know right here at the Capitol, vote these people out if they're an incumbent. Vote them out. Send a message, and we will see you soon.